Can you really trust that what you read in the Bible is true? Well, you know, I'm going to answer yes, but let me tell you one reason I have confidence in it. At the very least, it'll give you something to think about. Muhammad, the founder of Islam, died in the arms of his third wife, Aisha. His final words, repeated three times, were, All I seek now is the company of Allah. Buddha died surrounded by his disciples. He asked them if they had any questions yet to be answered, pronounced a blessing on them, and then said, Be a light to yourself. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon Church, died in a hail of gunfire, heroically defending himself from a mob. Moses went up on a mountain and was taken by God himself. And according to the Gospels, the founder of the Christian faith, Jesus, died powerless, naked, and humiliated on a cross. C.S. Lewis observed that crucifixion did not become common in artistic portrayals until anyone who had witnessed a real one had died. If you wanted to create a legend, the story of the Gospels would have been a very strange way to do it. According to, to Matthew and Mark, among the last words Jesus spoke were, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, why would anyone seeking to promote a fable or establish a new religion put those words on the dying lips of its founder? Unless that's precisely what he said. And that's not the only odd thing about the way the Scripture describes this movement. The leader died in a horrible, shameful way, and his immediate followers were anything but heroic themselves. One of them betrayed him. One of them denied he even knew him. And in his most desperate moment, all of them deserted him. And even before the end, they constantly missed the point of his teaching and misunderstood his mission. And the first witnesses to the resurrection in all four Gospels, were women. Now, in our culture, that would be a mark of credibility. In their culture, women were not even allowed to testify in court. In those days, if you were trying to promote a movement or shore up your power, the last thing you would do is make women your first witnesses, and yet that's what the Bible does. If you're a skeptic, an agnostic, or an atheist, thank, thank you for watching. The fact that you're open-minded enough to entertain a quick video from a Christian says something really good about you. And I don't for one minute think that this short episode is going to eliminate all your doubts. Maybe not even move the needle. I just hope it gives you something to think about. That's why we call these videos not a sermon, just a thought.